Hey guys, welcome to episode 250 of Hello Dysfunction. I'm Potafria. I'm Crystal. What's new? I've been working like a dog. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. What else is new? <laughs> um, dude. That's the my usual. clients tra- transitioning um, to death. And um, so I've been at not only the house, but at the cemetery by their house oh. where they're. Oh, God. Preparing. Yeah. Because one family member passed and then another one is transitioning. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, so. This is the cemetery that I used to work at. Remember, oh. I worked at the cemetery mortuary yeah. funeral home all in one. Yeah. Um, so I was blown away today back when I worked there. And and it's in an affluent area. It's, mm-hmm. it's um a, a more expensive cemetery. Um, always has been. But when I worked there as a family service counselor... I recall the plots. Now, each plot houses two bodies, essentially, right? Mm-hmm. One stacked on top of each other. So it's like two for one spot. But Are they sold that way? Like, do you request that or that's standard? It's standard at this place. They oh. tell you each spot can fit two. Okay. But when I worked there, the plot um, on the lower level, which is... um by the entrance, which is a more desirable area, I think. Um, Plots were about Mm $8,000. You want to know what they are today? Bitch, I almost fell out of my chair. Mm -mm. One plot, one section of ground. This doesn't include anything. Yeah, it fits Uh two on top of each other. It doesn't include anything else. Literally just the land, Mm -hmm. Twenty five grand. I think it's probably because it's a prime location on the property, right? So we went up and got priced for the other grounds, right, Mm -hmm. that are in different areas. The least expensive, $17,000. Yeah. That doesn't include, you know, you have to have a grave liner. You have to, or else the ground will become uneven. Mm -hmm. That's three grand. Then your caskets go at this place, go anywhere between twenty nine. dollars and twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, holy shit. Yeah, it's fucked up. The industry itself has always been super gross to me because Same. of the commission based sales yep, and right the upselling everyone and it's gross. It's just gross, period. So if you could avoid that, if you're someone that's not worried about being in the ground for eternity, I would encourage everybody to like get cremated, get donated, get yes. fucking like I don't know. If you want to be buried, I suggest making pre-arrangements, which means while you're alive, you can make payments on it for as long as you need. Life insurance. Yes. You can get life insurance for really cheap as long as you're not like a sick person and you're fairly young still. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I don't think I don't have life insurance right now. I don't really care. Like I can donate my body or. I'm donating. Yeah. Because it's just the fact that. Like you said, what rubs me the wrong way. The reason why I quit that position was it was commission-based. It's like car sales. My sales manager used to say, take advantage of families and their time in need. And just the fact that we even, as human beings, greedy, commodified death, it's just like There's nothing that's um, off limits when it comes to capitalism and greed. No. (laughs) Nothing. Like... Yeah, it's just like car sales, though. It's like you don't um, make any money unless you're ripping them off. Yes. That's that's what you're basically what your commission is based on is how much you can upsell. Yes. And it's fucked up. So, yeah, I didn't do that very long either. I just was mind blown. I, oh, my God. So much fucking money. Yeah. So much money. But they have insurance and stuff, right? So they don't have insurance? Mm-mm. I thought they were like a wealthy like family. There's no, he didn't prepay for anything. He was a doctor and didn't have life insurance? No. 
How does that work? I don't, I don't know. Uh, the client I work for was really mad yelling about that today. I don't understand. How yeah. is that something you overlook as a doctor, as an adult? Like a, I don't, I don't know. know. She was really upset. In a, an affluent family. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, at least they got it. They ain't got to do car washes and shit. No, you know what I'm go saying? fund so, me, thankfully. Yeah, so that's right. Good. That's a blessing. Yeah. More better off than most for yeah. sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so that's we what um, I've been doing. shipped off our cups. Uh, if you are a patron, if you're not, I encourage you to join because we did kind of a little release of some stock that we had left over from our live show. So we had some coffee cups and we had some um, small town girl teas <laughs> left. So a bunch of those went out this week. We had a little, uh, operation factory set up at your house it's so ridiculous it's really so fucking <laughs> ridiculous it's a joke is she what it said is. we're two clowns in a circus try to run a but, yeah literally so like um please bear with us and be patient they did go out in a timely manner yeah luckily so i'm proud of that um Same. but yeah it's just like a joke us trying to do anything so maybe a different vendor in the future that can provide the shipping for us will Absolutely. be explored a little bit because it's just a lot. It's a lot. Um, Keys was adorable putting on uh, her sh- fucking Uggs, but they were like little knee-high high. boots. Little yeah. thigh-high boots. They were absolutely adorable. She's great. She's funny. She's a cheerleader. Yeah. I've had um, a busy week. Like yesterday, both girls had a doctor's appointment. Bunny had a dentist appointment. In one I had day? To, yes. I had That's to drop my car at the dealer. Like all of this shit because I was due for a service. Um, all this shit in one day. And then I tried to take a nap in the afternoon. That didn't happen. It just made me feel worse. Because mm. um, I lately, when I try to take a nap or even... Cause like she, Pease is still sick. Like she, she's been sick for weeks, but like the cough is lingering and it's really bad at night still. So I don't go, fall all the way asleep. I'm in like this twilight yep. sleep where I can still listen to her and I'm not getting rest. Yeah. That's not so, like real. That's not like, it's um, not real sleep. REM sleep. No. And it's, it's really fucking weird because I'm having dreams, but I'm still able to hear her the whole time. So I did that this morning, too. I tried to take like a little nap after we dropped Bunny off at school and I could hear her iPad going the whole time. But I also had a dream and it was just like, did you incorporate the sounds into your dream? I could just hear them in the background the whole time. (laughs) And I woke up feeling like shit. So, yeah, that's been fun. Um, But, you know, whatever, it'll get better. It's supposed to rain tomorrow and the next day, which I'm not happy about. No. But um, wrestling is this weekend, so um, Jen is supposed to come. And if anybody else would like to come, we can put together a little section. Let me know. It's in San Francisco again. Saturday? Uh, Yes. I think it's at 7 p.m. So You're going? Yeah, for sure. It's at 7 p.m. So, yeah, hopefully this will be released in time. And you guys can let me know if you want to come. I'm excited. Um, Yeah, me too. Wrestling is a fucking blast. It is a really good time. My our friend Jen um has never been, but one of her best friends, I found out it's a really small world, um, is one of the wrestlers. Shut up. One of her best friends. Like literally th- they call each other that. So I was so like, she first of all. Yeah, so she is. And then um I don't know if he's wrestling Saturday or not, but I know he is for sure the following month. So she's going to come this weekend, but she's also going to come to that one so she could see him. And I'm like thinking that would be so cool. Like I, I never sure. knew. Yeah. You, it's a good fucking nice. It's a good time. time. Yeah. And they have drinks. And <laughs> um, I think the one next month is going to be like actual, a little more of a bar atmosphere, oh. um, which is going to be different. I think it's April. I'll I'll update you guys, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. So, oh. like a DJ kind of um, bar, like with music though experience. Oh. Yeah, it's, they're changing it up a little bit, so that's gonna that'll be, nice. be cool. Yeah, yeah, it's already fun, so that will be cool. Yeah, and if you're a patron, you remember we did an episode with one of the wrestlers, Vinny. Um, he's back from Japan, and he'll be there. And is he yeah. wrestling? Yeah, 
Yeah, he's wrestling Saturday too. So we'll be out. It'll be great. Um, It is official. The nightgowns are in fact gone. Dude. Like whoever stole my package and realized they were grandma nightgowns. Like I wish you would have just threw them on the property somewhere or like so that the package would have made it to the office, you know. But no, they're gone. So my forty dollars and my fucking time, your time, hours and hours. hours of labor looking because I'm never gonna find those again. So I'm just fucking irritated at that. I'm gonna contact the postmaster and just see, like, because what the situation is, someone held up a mail carrier in Richmond and took their keys. Um, What a lot of people don't know is, um, and they keep it a secret on purpose, is that the keys are universal. So they go to all mailboxes in Richmond, probably everywhere. Um, It would be really responsible if you know that you get them stolen, that you would then replace the locks instead of just letting people get robbed over and over and over again. Could have been, it's been like a year. You could have been replaced those locks yeah 20 fucking times it it exactly it's a day of your time it's the your responsibility like why wouldn't you do that to protect right some kind of integrity for the people people. like yeah right wouldn't you want to do that for your your customers i would it it has me pissed off so i'm going to contact the postmaster or whatever postal inspector whatever they're called um which is basically cops for the fucking post office right and see what I can do because this has gone on for hella long. They kept that key thing a secret until it was like the second incident. Then they told me and then confirmed it again this time and just said like, yeah, they're they're not changing any locks. So I contacted my leasing office where I live and I was like, is it possible to like relocate the fucking mailboxes somewhere secure so people can't just walk up and open them maybe behind the door or or something or get delivered to the office? They're supposed to be holding all my packages right now, but the carrier that I normally have was on vacation, didn't pass the message on. So the one in- taking her place um, left my nightgowns there. That's because he didn't know because they didn't tell him. Can we leave a fucking no? So as that's soon what as I'm going to do. Open your mailbox mm-hmm. door. It says, "Don't fucking leave shit in here." That's what I'm going to do, and Good. then I'm going to stop having shit shipped there. Anyway, like if I have to drive, because I can't use our PO box because a lot of like uh, apps and you can companies always put it and here, shit, you know that. that's what I'm going to have to do because a lot of apps don't let you ship to a PO box right. for some reason. I don't know if it's like a fraud thing or what, but they don't let you. So I have to have a physical address. Yeah, you so, can always um, send it here. It's just really fucking annoying that you're not doing anything to try to stop it. So it's just right. free reign for whoever has the key. And can That's you imagine bullshit. how much shit yeah. they've gotten? I know what it they got me from me at Christmas. Like they got <laughs> shoes. Um, they got a, like a fucking Christmas sweater that Carolyn would have wore. They got these <laughs> nightgowns. They got um, a sweatsuit and a hoodie. Uh, like, and from these me, are all, like, you're purchasing, you purchase them from small people not big corporations yeah Mm -hmm. so it's fucked up filing disputes with them right no one well i can't you know i can't because like um when like for example if you buy things on poshmark or mercari which both i use a lot yeah okay it's an individual it's not a business it's a person you're buying shit from but they have a policy where the mail carrier scans the package as delivered when they put it in the box. So it says, So you I got can't it. dispute it and say it never made it to the box because they have that system in place, right? So, you know, again, it's being suggested to me, well, you can try and dispute it with your credit card company. And I'm like, My, you, okay. Your credit card company is going to think you're committing fraud at this you're, point. Well, I mean, that's what it is. Because as soon as they investigate, they're going to see it shows delivered. So right. like, what do you want me to do? You're asking me to try to do fraud, which I'm not against. But right. like- you know, if I thought it was coming from the bank or something, then it would be cool. For sure. But like from a person, I don't want to fuck them because they did 20 their times. Yeah, they did their part. You know, right. it's just it's bullshit. So the fact that the post office does not do anything to protect consumers, but they want people to keep them in business because it's a little shaky for them. It is. Um, It's just nervy. Like, you want people to utilize your services instead of FedEx, UPS, whoever else, but you're not even protecting your consumers. So I just can't believe they're so lazy. 
or want to yeah. keep costs down. How much that would they it won't cost replace lock to replace the fucking lock? Yeah, it's bullshit. So I'm ready to drive my car through the fucking mailboxes no. so they have to be replaced and then change the lock. Hey, let's talk like God to the damn, back. rent a U-Haul, put insurance on it, and drive it through the fucking mailboxes. That's what, how you do it. At this point, like that's what they're asking for. Yeah. Or commit credit card fraud. Those are my two options that I'm weighing in my head right now. It's dumb. That shit is fucking it's infuriating. It's fucking dumb. Yeah. In fucking infuriating. Yeah. So that's what I'm dealing with. Um, so yesterday, you know, I got my car detailed, right? Mm-hmm. And yesterday I went to get something out of my car while at work. And a baseball, a hard baseball rolled out of my car bitch and it said like you know it was one of them reprint balls where it says like 1936 fucking world champions or something and it has like babe rose and a bunch of other signatures on it but i stood there for like five minutes so confused i texted mark i texted the kids bitch i texted my brothers i'm like did one of y'all put this ball in my car everyone's like no did it come from john's no where did the baseball go? I don't fucking know. Why would a car wash per you think it happened at the car wash? Maybe they put it in the wrong car. I don't fucking know. But I literally just opened the door and it just went doom. I don't dun, see dun. a detailer like having an autographed baseball in their pocket. Like, you know? Yeah. I'm I'm so befuddled by the whole thing. Hmm. Then last night, let me tell you, I haven't told anybody this. Not Mark, not the kids, nobody. I'm sitting in the garage in my smoking area mm -hmm. by the machine that likes to go off randomly from our friends. Mm -hmm. And I'm playing my game and I'm looking down smoking a cigarette and I fucking swear to God, dude, I feel on my shoulder. Garage jumped up so fucking fast. I thought maybe a spider fell from the ceiling. Nope. Nope, it was just a... Oh, my God. On my shoulder. Like this. Like that. I fucking made me almost shit myself. You might <clears throat> you might need to start smoking in your car. <laughs> or something. For real. Like, because, yeah. For real. I was like, oh, my fucking God. I just got and up. And the shit only happens to you, right? And only... <sighs> It's like usually that late machine, at night. And that machine only goes off when you're in there. Yep. It hasn't gone off with nope. like with an empty garage. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Yeah. No, very very no intentional. Else. Very weird. Very intentional stuff going on. Yeah. I didn't even say anything. I didn't acknowledge it. Yeah. But I stood up hella quick because I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I would um, be like, that's it. That's how I felt going last night. Yep. Yep, I was done. That's what made me come in the God, house. God, what the fuck? Yeah, I was done. That shit made me fucking sick, scared to my stomach, you know, like that yeah. sick feeling. Yeah. It's like, no, nah, I'm going in the house. Fuck you. Oh, fuck you, whoever's doing it. Yeah. Fuck you. God. Um, I had a cute story from the Netherlands. Um, a little bit of something lighthearted. Oh, good. Um, so Tammy, I believe, is who sent me this. You know. Yeah, Tammy. yeah, yeah. Um, and it is a post and it was like, I don't know if this was from like a oh, it was from another page. And it <laughs> it says, I need to tell you about the fish doorbell. Oh my God. Did you see it? Yes. Okay, so very important. A dam in the Netherlands, you know, to block water. Uh, the weird, weird sleeus lock, I'm not saying that right, but whatever, um, is directly on a mi migratory path for spawning fish. They have a worker stationed there. The fact this is a job is so cute. I first want of it. all. Yeah. I want it. They have a worker. I want to know what their uniform looks like. <laughs> it has little fish um, on it. With a little cap. Yes. Um, stationed there to open the door for the fish, but they can take a while to open it. So to keep the fish from getting preyed on by birds, they installed a doorbell. <laughs> Only the fish don't have hands to <laughs> ring the doorbell. If you go to their website, they have a live camera 
and a doorbell that you ring for the fish. You just sit and when press they're it. waiting, and then the dam worker opens the door for them. I can't express how obsessed I am with this. Look at this shit! Oh my god, and. It's fucking hella camera shots, <laughs> like a, a ring camera, fish. a fish patiently, politely waiting, <laughs> waiting to get through. We need the website. We need the fucking yes. website. Um, politely, and it's you can see the fish's faces. They're on their way. They have things to do. They're going to work. Business They're going meetings to see their families. <laughs> and there was a little disclaimer, like please don't fucking doorbell ditch the fish dam. Please don't do that. Like you That's know, not cool. it's not nice. Um, the fish. You can see close-ups of their fi- the top first one is my favorite. I like the one with the big <laughs> eye. Looks like it has teeth coming out. So they're great. They're on their route. This There's is little their, frogs. They're commuting, and you have to help them. You have to help them. So if you get bored, um, the website is this doorbell. What is it? V i s d e u r this is like a reading test um, at the DMV. You're doing good. Uh, okay, start over. V-I-S-D-E-U-R-B-E-L dot N-L. That was good eyes. So, you guys, it's really fucking cute. Go check out the fish, the commuters. And we all have to work together and in do, this Pick job. up a shift, you know? Like, let's let's do our part for the world. And, you we know. We need more of this. Yeah, and it's so fucking cute. So cute. What a great cool It made my day and I was like interactive perfect. Idea. Something lighthearted to fucking share for once. Right. Yeah. Cuz it's been Thank you Tammy. <laughs> no. This, Thank you for sending it. This made my whole fucking evening yes. yesterday. I got so excited. <laughs> so excited. Their faces are so funny. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm here. I'm here, guys. There's little crabs waiting to get yeah. through. Yeah. Like, what? it's all kinds of, like, fish, wildlife, yes. un- un- sea creatures. So cute. So I cute. I love it. Something else good. Um, Mark never made an announcement or anything, but I'm going to say it because I think it's something that should be celebrated. Uh, he took a welder test. He passed it. He's a certified welder. And immediately I was like, oh, they make good money. <laughs> Good. They make great money. Get on it. I think that's awesome. Congratulations to Mark. Just wanted to say Um, congratulations. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I want to see more girl welders. Yes. I always get so excited when I see any. Um, I think it's awesome. And it's a a trade that's like always going to be needed and um, like good, secure thing to learn for job security and whatnot. So, yeah. Shout out to all the welders. Yeah. The construct. Like I like seeing uh, women construction workers and shit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited. The new Beetlejuice movie is coming out. We're September going to see 6th. that on opening night. It has, uh, what's his name? Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is in it. Is he Win- Beetlejuice again? W- yes. Winona Ryder is in it. She's fucking Lydia. They're doing it right. I get pissed. Good job. Yeah, finally. I get so pissed when old movies are like remade or there's fucking sequels or whatever. Hell, like y'all are bored. I get it. There was a strike. Like, do I need to come up. write movies for y'all because you don't know what to do? But this one, I'm really fucking happy They've been happy working about. on it for a few years. And it's amazing. I watched the trailer and I got chills. And I was like, am I gay? Like, why am I fucking getting so emotional about You're this? You're crying? I got emotional. And I was like, oh, my God. It made me feel something. And, yeah, I'm really fucking excited. So, September 6th, we have something in our lives to look forward to. Yes. Um, that was one of the movies that Will and I watched repeatedly. Same. I've, I've said before, we paused it and rewound it to watch <laughs> the, him. The whorehouse. No, that that and, <laughs> and the grabbing. Nice himself. fucking yeah. model. Bam, bam. Like, yes. <laughs> we watched it five million times. I can sing every fucking yes, song from that. I love it so much. They could not uh, have redone that without Michael Keaton. Yeah, this or, is like, or Winona Ryder. No, I, I wouldn't. I would protest. No, same. I would get out and pick it yeah. if they if they used anybody else. But this is like Tim Burton's best fucking film by far, mm-hmm. um, and it's just great. It's yeah. so great on so many levels. So. I, I don't like him as a human being, but this movie is he shitty? Yeah, I mean, aren't they all? I'm Absolutely. not surprised at all, but. What, Absolutely. What's wrong with him? 
Oh God, um, timber and problematic. And oh really? Yeah, <sighs> it's well, really really disappointing. But yeah, I need to watch this for science. Yeah, maybe we could steal tickets or something for sure. We'll Pirate see. the movie. Yeah, something. There's always a loophole. we always there's always a scam to yeah, do, so we don't get no money. Mm -hmm. But at least this is a sequel that's being done properly. Yes. Yes. Giving it the love it deserves. Yes. Yeah. The respect. Yes. Yes. Put some respect on Beetlejuice's yes. name. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um. Uh, oh, go ahead. Or no, go, we're on like a a happy. Uh, well, Street. I'm gonna ruin it oh, real quick because I was going to. Um. So you know, Sister Wives is my favorite reality family, mm -hmm. and I'm them in the. What is it? Thousand pound sisters. I'm over them. I'm Are not, you? Yeah. Ever since Tammy lost weight, she lost her pizzazz. She She's lost not, her, her spark. spark. She's not sassy anymore. She's not. No sodies. Mm -mm. No. Like, and then Amy, she's all like feeling herself. Got Louis bags and fucking um, a oh, divorce. They got money now. And got a divorce, though. And like, so, you know, I don't know. Not that I care about that. But like, they just lost their. I haven't watched any of the you know, most recent episodes, but like from the little clips I saw from before that or whatever, I was just like, mm, I, you lost me. Mm -mm, you, you lost, lost weight me. and you're too good now. Mm -hmm. But like Tammy is, you know, I follow her on social media and stuff still. She just doesn't. She used to be sassy, yeah. sassy girl. She's not sassy no more. So it's unfortunate. But so anyway, my favorite family has always been favorite reality family has always been sister wives heavily fucking immersed in their lives. Um, I get obsessed with polygamy once a year, I'd say where I think I can do it. It's all, it, I owe a lot of that feeling to them you. and their family. God damn it. But um, Janelle, who was one of the wives that I like, um, they've all dissolved their marriages. Did you mm -hmm. know that? Well, they all left him, right? Yeah. Except for Robin, who deserves to be with him. Right. But um, Janelle, her son, killed himself. What? He shot himself in the head. And one of the siblings, uh, I believe that their housemate... Trigger warning. Found him. No. Yeah. And it's so unfortunate. And How old was he? He was... Um, let's see. No. He was in his 20s. Um, but he was he, in the military. He was one of the dude's kids. What's the They're all the dude's kids. Okay. I just didn't know if she had kids before she married. No. Him. Okay. Uh-uh. Okay. Um, but they uh yeah, he's he's one of the older sons. What's unfortunate is like their relationship was hella shaky. Like a lot of the older kids yeah. don't fuck with Cody. I read that. And he like didn't care and was very childish and like yeah. they need to fix it with me and like stubborn about nah, fixing it with his piece kids. Of shit. Oh my god, he probably feels so fucking bad. But as he should. Oh, it was just I couldn't believe it when I saw the announcement. I was like, oh my fucking God. Like he um I know he was in the military and he was a huge cat lover. Like he always oh. he he adopted cats and like he wanted like donations to a certain, you know, foundation where he got his cats from or whatever. But he um, just was a sweet guy and like a really good sibling to his youngest, um, you know, yeah. little sisters and stuff. And oh, God, it was so sad. And I was like, what the fuck? Like that shit blew me because I had just got done watching um, like their reunion and all that and getting caught up. And yeah, this I. I saw the wife like, or one of the wives post that like they wish they could have like fixed things. Um, I follow like a gossip page that updates about them a lot and stuff. And they said that like they uh, him and his dad did not like make things better before this happened. So. Oh, my God. Awful. 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 I cannot imagine. Has Janelle spoke about She's it She's posted and she spoke. And then Christine, one of the other, my other favorite wife, um, she posted about it, too, because she was super close to Janelle's kids. I bet. Like, those two are besties. And even through the divorces and everything, they remain super close, which I love. Mary, not so Same. much. She was close to, like, Robin, and she's just separated pretty much. But... Janelle and Christine are super close and their kids are super close with each other. The yeah. others, not so much. So it like hit both of their families hella fucking hard. It's just so, so sad. so heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking awful. I wonder what 
was going on. And I know. Was it like mental health? Was it like an incident? An, a single. In, yeah. I don't know what it could have been. Fuck. God. God, that's really sad. Yeah. Um, it doesn't help. That God, it was obvious that he had been deceased for a significant <gasps> period. Therefore, no life saving efforts were performed. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, Janelle Brown told officers about troubling messages her son had sent the day before he died. I didn't know that part. According to the report, um, it also said one, some of Garrison's roommates had told the police that they heard a pop sound Monday night, oh, but God. did not think it was a gunshot and did not check on him. Fuck. <sighs> Investigate everything. Yeah. Any weird noise, I'm going to see. Because I'm one of them fucking dumb white people that go investigate. I guess Janelle said she should have gotten Garrison help in the past. So that's... Let that be a message. If you think, you know, hindsight hindsight is a motherfucker. But, like, yeah. if you feel you never want something to happen and you feel like you should have taken steps. For sure. To prevent a tragedy like this. Um, Sometimes that's unavoidable. But if you're seeing signs or anything, oh. like, just fucking... Especially with your kids. Garrison's roommates, as well as his brother Gabriel, told police that Garrison had recently been struggling with a drinking problem and possible mental health issues. Gabriel noted, however, that his brother had recently started a job um, at a medical facility and seemed okay. I wonder. A lot of people suffer in silence. And that shit is dangerous. Do, um, you think growing up in that lifestyle, they all have, have talking about. They've all spoke on like the impact, and you know, none of them want to do polygamy. And I think that is very telling of the way that they grew up. Yeah. If all your children grew up that way, and not and one not of a single them one, thinks there's, there's it's a twenty three kids. There's twenty. They're out of twenty three. Not one wants to do it. That's very you telling. You fuck them up. Yeah, and they all have spoke, uh, um, you know, now that they're older and everything and more outspoken, they've all had things to say about, you know, how they feel about certain, the way that they were mothered by certain wives and the way that their dad handled situations and shit. And yeah. like, they fuck them kids up. It's fucked up. For sure. I mean, you know, we all do our best and I'm not saying they intended to hurt right. these kids, but like, you got to be really careful with fucking kids because- were examples of like yeah. what can happen if you drop the ball like For you know sure. it, it it's a lifelong thing like the effects and ramifications of your actions absolutely parenting kids little you know they carry that with them their whole lives so yeah you know how i've said before like how i feel about suicide and um one of the siblings made a post, one of the sisters, I'm not sure if it's Janelle's daughter, but she made a post on her social media basically saying, basically speaking on the hole that you leave in your loved ones when you do something like this and basically saying you need to hold on for their sake. Like, and, and not do selfish. this. So and I'm like, those people, those people. It made me so mad. Those people. You know, the sister, for instance, that feels suicide is selfish. It's also selfish to have somebody suffering so badly. Think about yeah. how badly you have to be suffering to make that to decision not that to I'm be done here. No, yeah, more. exactly. I, I think not, not enough people consider that. You know, if you're at that point, it's bad. It makes me feel heartbroken. Yeah, for so sure. So he's selfish for doing it, but. You're not selfish for wanting him to stay here and suffer for your sake. So that's you're selfish not sad. to me. That's selfish. That's selfish too. to me. That's um, selfish. It's very unfortunate, and it's always sad when I hear of someone unaliving themselves. But I always am like happy for them because that's what the <clears throat> fuck you wanted, and you're not suffering anymore. You know? Yeah, I have a pact with all our kids, Bunny too. Um, if they ever feel like unaliving themselves. They have to reach out to one person. One. It could be anybody yeah. in the world. You have to reach out to one person and tell them. And just that's a good let them talk to, to you to have. and give one whoever you choose that chance to talk to you. And if you still feel like it, but at least 
one person. I think we've said before too, to also make a deal that, okay, if you feel this way in your head, put it off until next week and yeah. see if you feel that way next yep. week. Because I know for myself, when I feel really fucking crazy and out of control and impulsive and down and like really depressed, if I just sleep, yes, the next day I feel 100% different. Yes. Not necessarily better all the way, but I do feel um, 100% different than that super low point. And it may not change your mind, everyone's mind, but at least give yourself that so yep. that you're certain. You know what I mean? Give it a breather and and reach out to one person. Yeah. Just And if you still feel like it, then, you know... It is what it is, but it, at, at least try those two things. First. And I think people's choices need to be respected. Yeah. Like, th ultimately, it's your choice. And a lot of people are left here to suffer. And, like, people have their own lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think um, expecting someone to stay here and suffer so that you're not sad, but, like, you can't put your life on hold and fucking carry them through everything. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. you need to respect people's choices, too. Right. Even if it's not a choice you fucking agree with. Right. I'm sorry. You guys, go to YouTube, to the comments, please. And I would like to know your thoughts. Absolutely. Because uh, I'd be feeling alone in that sometimes. But mm -hmm. um, tell us what you think in the comments and let us know. Because, I mean... I can't be the only one feeling this way. No. I, I think you're it ultimately it's your you choice. Do. You don't have to be terminal to want to check out. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be fucking, I don't know. I just think that those choices need to sometimes be respected too. Yeah. Especially uh, look at the fucking world we live in. Everything is yeah. so fucking depressing. It right. made me wonder cause since he was in the military, did it, did that maybe play a little part? You know, who fucking knows? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Literally before we came in here, I jumped on IG really fast. The first two fucking things I see one, the fucking motherfucking bitch ass IOF, mm -hmm. the IDF. Sniping those three dudes just walking in Khan Yunus. Mm -hmm. They're just walking and you literally fucking kill them. You you bomb them. They're walking. They're already fucking starving. Their homes are destroyed. They're I, walking through dirt. You're yeah. killing civilians for fun. I hate They're you motherfuckers. They're treating it like a video game and it's ridiculous. And the technology they have this sharpshooter um it might be called sharpshooter <laughs> it's a it's a technology that i believe was developed in the bay area um i know that uh a lot of businesses that are on the boycott list supported the developing this this uh weaponry it's been explained described it's as it's probably made by like Raytheon or fucking some bullshit it was described that um a blind person could use this weaponry and never miss a shot ever so like that's scary so we have the technology that's so scary to do that but yet you guys are carpet bombing everything you're using it on anyone you're not using it with um intelligence you know going after specific targeted people no. you're hitting kids Fucking like it's sick it's disgusting then the next post I see is this woman. She's cute. She's blonde. She has all these tattoos on her face. She has hollow piercings. She's cute. You can tell she's like getting over a cold. She's talking. She has an accent from some Euro country. Mm. And of course, I look at the account name. Don't ask me why it popped up on my shit, but it says libtards of TikTok. <laughs> that shit fucking pissed me off already. <laughs> then I'm watching the video and it's just, a pretty girl talking about her new fucking nose plugs, right? She's yeah. stretching right here, whatever. And everyone in the comments is like, this is what our words with mental illness look like. This is mental illness. Daddy this issues. is a stupid bitch. Fuck yes. It. Yeah, yeah. And I've that seen it. fucking pissed me off. Like, well, it's a you are the most hard page, so and that's I'm, who goes there. I didn't yeah. even know there was one. I was like, why is this popping up on my suggested shit like I would ever There's like this? There's a whole this. community of people that are, you know, 
that target those, you know, anybody alternative looking fucking. The shit they were yeah. saying in the comments, I was like, you guys are the most miserable fucking humans on earth. Bored. To sit up and Judgy judge a stranger. And, yeah. Yeah. For body mods. That's oh. just living their life, minding their Making business. Making a sweet yeah. little happy fucking video. Yeah, it's disgusting. People like that. There's a lot of that on Twitter. A lot that I see. And I'm just like. I'm going to tell oh. you now. This is. <laughs> tell them, fish. <laughs> so if you sit up and all you do is fucking judge and say the most hateful, horrible shit to strangers on the internet. You got some problems. You're also inviting all of that energy to come back to you. So I hope you know that when you put things out, that's just how manifesting works. Yes. When you put that out, expect it to come back to you in a, a myriad of ways. Um, Great word. Yeah. And it's just, and you're in for it. Like, you, you know, are. find something better to do. And I don't know, like, it just says a lot about you. Like, you're miserable. You have insecurities. Why are mm -hmm. you projecting? Because that's what I think of. Like, you're I mean, a shit we know human. people like that. We know people like that that are so miserable and bored in their fucking lives that all they do is gossip and judge and pick people apart and fuck. And it's it's sad. It's really pathetic and sad. And it's way more telling about you than yes. who you're trying to insult. Like yes. you look fucking dumb and sad and miserable. Hella dumb. You got yeah. The, Speaking of manifesting or manifestation or things coming back to you. I called her yesterday and I cried, but so you know, you guys know I looked after my uncle, my grandfather's cousin, for like the last 12 years. Um, I'd go to the home and visit him. I took care of all the medical stuff. I did all of this because despite the fact that he had five fucking children and a few other family members alive, nobody fucking stepped up. Which is I, insane to me. Absolutely insane. So I did it. <clears throat> And when I do things, I, I don't do them with the expectation of anything in return. I, I'm not holier than thou. I don't think I'm like fucking tooting my horn yeah. or so great. I'm just. You don't do it hoping for good karma. No. Mm -mm. No. And yesterday, Mark calls and he's like, are you expecting certified mail? And I'm like, no. And he's like, the fucking landlords, they're raising our rent again. And I was like, well, I'll text her. And he goes, don't give him any ideas. He's like, <laughs> no, don't even real. fucking do it. For real. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. Okay, we'll find out when we get home. So he pulls the slip out of the mailbox and he's like, it's from blah, blah, health and wellness. And I'm like, fuck, it's probably a bill, right? It's a fucking bill. I'm like, I'm going to go to the post office right now and see what it is. So I go there. The dude brings it out. He's like, it's here. Um, I sign for it. I open it with my stomach all sick. And <laughs> it was a check. And nothing life altering, you know, a minuscule amount, but... I never was expecting that. And yeah. um, it was really nice to feel like the universe just gave a little piece back. You were hell of emotional. I and I'm was. like thinking to myself, it ain't that much, bitch. <laughs> but I was but like, oh, that's When you sweet. don't expect like, anything, like, yeah, it yeah. just felt really... You really do everything with pure intentions. Um, I will say that. You're Thank never... You. Um, if I, sometimes if I go out my way, I go about it wrong and I'm like, it'll come back. Like, you know, I and love I, you but like you do it without that hope, like without that even thought. So yeah, it's gonna, you know, it, you're gonna be good. It felt really good. Um, it just felt like the universe acknowledged my efforts. Yeah. yeah and so that, sure. I was crying and she was like, why are you crying? <laughs> I was like, oh, don't <laughs> cry. Like, I'm happy. The broom came out. I was like, there, there. <laughs> Patting like, the back of your head I'm with a broom. Happy. Do you want water? I don't know what to say. You're getting really You're weird. all, why are you calling me? You're First of all, and weird. crying, bitch. You got me fucked Well, up. when you started crying, I thought I misunderstood. I thought it was like 10,000 or something. Like, And I'm thinking, bitch, it ain't that fucking much. Like, chill out. But you know, I was just like, oh, don't cry. You're okay. Aww. But yeah, so it fucking, you know, it made my fucking night. And then yeah. fucking... I got a bunch of groceries at Safeway for a very small amount. Hey, really? not because I did something. What happened? Um, I walk, I walk up to you, self checkout. Yeah, the screen. It is, didn't read your purse. Like no, no. <laughs> so right after I go to the store, I go to you, self checkout. Um, 
there's a message on the screen that says um, someone will be over to help in a minute. Like someone had rang some stuff up and then walked away, right? Oh, so then mm-hmm. that message popped up. So I'm standing there with all my groceries waiting for someone to come over so they can clear it and I can ring my stuff up. Mm-hmm. Well, the person comes over and is like, oh my gosh, all that stuff looks heavy. Let's get you some bags for it and starts bagging all my stuff. No. Why doesn't and that happen so, to me? What? I'm like, thank you so much. I was struggling. I go to walk away and they're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. The transaction didn't process. Come back, come back. And I'm like, oh, shit. Right. So I come back and it's like 30 bucks. I have like a hundred dollars worth of stuff. What? So I just slide. They bring me up for that transaction. So and they thought that was your. Yes. Trans- oh, you got lucky. Lucky. Wow. And I didn't do anything, but I also didn't say, hey, that's not mine. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So just, when all else fails, play really stupid. That's what I did. Play really fucking stupid. I felt like it was another gift. It was definitely a gift. So that's yeah. why I just accepted. Yes, it. absolutely. I need to g- accept some gifts. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's great. I love that. It was. That was the same day. What it was a good like day. A, it was like an hour after I talked. That to was you. a good day. It was a good yeah, day. Yeah. That's. I like that day. It was. That and, was good. And then Mark made corned beef and cabbage. So. It was Was delicious. Yes. (laughs) Good. You know, I slather it in hordes of mustard. Good. Yeah, that's a good day. I have a friend that hates mustard so much, he doesn't allow it in the house. Oh, that person has a problem. I said, you're hella dramatic. He said, I don't even let my wife bring in the house. Don't even think about bringing in the house. Who is that? So I can slap them. I'll tell you what we're done. Because that's just stupid. I'll squirt (laughs) mustard in my mouth. I said, I love... Mustard is so good as a marinade, as a fucking condiment, as anything. Like, oh my God. Like, are you kidding me? Who hates mustard? Hates it so much. It's not allowed in the house. You better have been molested with mustard when you were fucking (laughs) little. Because what the fuck? What kind of... What? (laughs) I'm sorry, but what the fuck... (laughs) What kind of hate? Who hates that? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't make any sense of that. I cannot. Yes, but fucking hates. I couldn't believe it. I was like, you're so dramatic. Very. And now I'm bothered because of my love I for mustard. My love and devotion. Like, don't fucking do that. I said that. my best friend fucking would hate you because we used she to loves squirt, mustard. Um, me and, and a friend used to squirt dollops of mustard on Lay's baked Lay's yep. chips and eat them. And Nation's French fries and mustard. Chili cheese fries. Douse them in yellow mustard. Yep. Mm. How funny. What a funny. hater. Uh-uh. We're not doing that. Yeah, I thought that was so funny. I instantly thought of you. <sighs> I was like, you're ridiculous, sir. Now I'm hungry. Yeah. Um, Hulu is coming out with a documentary about Black Twitter. And I got all excited for it because I've lived in Black Twitter for many years. I was instantly going to say it's going to be so funny. Hilarious, right? Yeah. But... On Twitter, I read some people that were interviewed for this documentary, it's on Hulu, were not credited. What? And I'm like, you know, so, so many people stealing. already steal from Black Twitter, already. Um, there's a fucking Bay Area creator, um, a pink cat company, uh, I won't name them specifically, mm-hmm. but they steal content from Black Twitter and print it on fucking t-shirts and sell it. That's so and have been doing up. it for years and never credit anyone and, and are a thief. And, you know, that's just one example. But a lot of people have stolen from Black Twitter for years. It's hilarious. And for it to happen again now when they're about to get, like, um, some acknowledgement for that's how great it up. is. Because, like, Twitter would be nothing without Black Twitter. Like, that's what it's, makes Twitter. That, I think that's why a lot of people are on Twitter. Yes. And I'm like, what the fuck? Don't contribute now for on a bigger scale. Like, the theft that, and, you know, intellectual any, property. You know, don't do that. Did they tag Hulu and shit so they could see? Like, Yeah. Yeah. There were some posts and some people had made some videos about it and stuff. And they were like, you know, I got interviewed for the Well, the one person I saw got in, actually interviewed for the documentary. And they were like, they ended up not crediting me at all. And it's just, it's a fucked up thing to do. Just don't take, we, I feel like we revisit this topic a lot. Intellectual property is important. It's, it's, Absolutely. you know, it's just as much like physical property to me. Like it should be valued on the same scale. Don't fucking take 
from people, whether it be design ideas, fucking artwork, fucking music, you know, anything. It's theft is theft. And if you yep. didn't come up with something organically, you know you didn't. You know you didn't. Don't profit off it. No. Don't fucking, it's just shitty. Don't it's take really someone shitty. else's slogan and put it on a fucking shirt. Don't, don't fucking copy people's like artwork and not credit the, even down to like nail designs, down to fucking, you know, in tattoos, like, you know, all, like, there's so many examples. If you appreciate it and want to use it, reach out and ask, and then at least credit that person. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so, not black Twitter related, but mm -hmm. there was an experiment going on with people here on Earth. They put them in a, um, it, it, so the experiment is known, uh, well, the mission, it's an experiment known as Chapea, C-H-A-P-E-A, mm -hmm. and it's where four ordinary people go into um, a, remember the movie Biodome with Polly Shore? No. Okay. Where, well, basically, they're in a um, fake environment mm -hmm. to simul simulate Mars. Okay. So they've been doing that for, um, it's scheduled to end simulating mars yes uh -huh. so they've been living in there for, for how long it's a little over a year the the experiment is scheduled to conclude i believe at the end of june or beginning of july mm -hmm. and i mean everything is the exact same it would be on mars like temperature atmosphere um length of time it takes for messages to go through all they're doing all of that what is because we hope listen to this this is what fucking killed me i already me. know where you're going we fucked our planet up so much yeah we're wanting yeah. to colonize mars at some point what is the obsession like um i'm so tired of these um, colonizers yeah and it's just like they're <laughs> Now you're branching out into other planets. Like, give it a fucking rest. We deserve to be hit with a meteor. For sure. We don't give it a to be able to leave rest. this planet. Yes. Yes. I was... So there's an episode of The Daily. Um, it's from probably about a week and a half, two weeks back, where they go over it. And it's very interesting, I will say the episode um, the details of the experiment the people they chose why they chose them mm -hmm. um, the environment they'll be living in like it, all of that is super interesting to me it's the intent that bothers me Absolutely. it's the intent behind it do Jupiter then do fucking you know what I mean like, no do you fucking... stay on earth and you live in the mess you made bitch I mean like pretend play pretend with something that's not gonna be possibly have potential of being livable you know when that with that gross intent behind it um, I just was, you're not just doing it in the name of science you're doing it because you want to know if you could buy real estate over there yep they're, they're gonna be in that experiment a total of 378 days um I'm very curious to see them interviewed after they come out I hope they spontaneously like. combust or grow another arm or something just <gasps> scrap the whole thing yes scrap um, it I'm tired of rich people they're calling and their obsession with space stop so the quote i wrote from the episode was a mission known as chapia an experiment in which four ordinary people would enact as closely as possible the lives of martian colonists disgusting next level futuristic colonization yep we don't want it no, we don't want it. I just felt like, how dare you? I hope destroy aliens, this planet. I hope aliens give your ass what you're looking for. No, for real. Because no, we we're, you're doing too much. That, you're doing Cruise too movie, much. War of the Worlds or whatever. We deserve it. But how dare you destroy this planet instead of trying to fix what mm -hmm. you've destroyed? You're like, we'll just go destroy another one. We'll start over there. Mm -mm. I hope you get what you're looking for. Yeah, same. It made me fucking piss. But the experiment itself. It's pretty I cool. love science. Love it. Yeah. So love like, it. um, and I would love to hear about how they all fuck each other and how they all fucking how they drink you know, coffee. How that's like, more important than food some days. And you know what I mean? It yes. gets all weird. I want to hear about their mental health the whole time. Their Things hygiene. Like, that. like yes. I want to know all that kind of interesting shit. But I don't know. Not don't with want the plan you going there. in the back of your head that I can go and fucking start up there. Yep. No. Yeah. yeah. I don't like it. Fuck you. Yep. That took all the the excitement out of yeah. it for me yeah definitely um i watched on 
is it Sundance or was it like IFC? I don't know. Just search the title, but it's called My Darling Vivian. And it is about, it's a documentary about Johnny Cash's wife, Vivian. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with her? Mm -mm. So, you know, he was married to that country singer. Um, Johnny Cash? Mm -hmm. June Carter Cash? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was married to her and like, when they became married, all of the shine and like everything kind of went to her. And a lot of people didn't even know that this first wife, his first real love ever fucking existed. And if you watch this, it's not only heartbreaking. Did they divorce or did she die? They divorced, but she lived longer than he did. Like, um, it's just crazy. You got to watch it. You know, I don't like to tell too much, but she had four of his daughters and wow. June Carter had two and a son, you know, but she always got credit for all of these kids. She would do interviews and be like, we have seven kids and I'm tired. I never knew we have had all a these. We have her. all these daughters and I'm tired. I'm tired. And it's just like she was such a huge part of his life. And June Carter not only fucked with him what, before he even got a divorce. Knew it knew it but she also took all the shine and just like it's really crazy how long were him and vivian married um i'm not sure long enough to have three fucking daughters four oh, long damn. enough to have four daughters and you know she was like they remained friends till he died and they wow. you know um it's a really sweet love story it gets a little interesting because if you look at this woman, I watched it with Bunny and I was like, she's a fucking black woman. Like, how is that even deniable? But there was a lot of controversy back then because um, she's Sicilian. Okay. But if you look at her, she's very clearly a black woman, a really? mixed woman. Yes. Very obvious to fucking anybody with eyes, I feel like. Yeah. And her features and shit. Yes. Look at her. Oh, yeah. Wow. So um, I'm talking about childhood photos, everything. There was footage from her whole entire life. And um, there was some controversy. I believe it was in the 60s. Um, Johnny Cash had got caught up at one point. He was famous by this time. Um, when they met, they were kids. He was yeah. in the military. They were writing each other love letters, all this shit. And then they began dating seriously, got together. It was a really sweet love story. Um, after he was already famous, he got caught bringing quaaludes or some shit back <laughs> from Mexico, right? And he went to fucking jail. And a reporter took a picture of him leaving the courthouse with Vivian. And in the photo, she looked very obviously black. People went crazy. You know, that wasn't a very accepting time. Right. And she was always raised as a white woman. Um, but again, I'm like, how can you not obviously see with eyes that you're mixed? It came out way, way later that uh, her family history. But the KKK saw that photo and they did this big, huge smear campaign trying to fuck off his career, fuck him up. They sent death threats. She was afraid. Like when she was home alone, she talked about how she would like have a shotgun in the room with her all the time. Damn. It was just her and her daughters. Like they got these crazy threats. They tried to go public and be like, no, no, no. She's Sicilian, whatever. Back then though, even Italians were frowned upon. Like right. there was a letter where he was comforting her when she was a kid. And he was like, I'm sorry that people point out that you're Italian all the time. Like people are just fucking stupid. Don't pay it no attention. You're beautiful. You're smart. Like whatever. Trying to comfort her because of discrimination, right. even as an Italian woman. That's but crazy. They got a hold of this Negro wife story and went fucking crazy and tried <gasps> to ruin his career and all that shit. So they kept coming out and being like, no, 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 she's Italian, whatever. And then um, whatever, I think that story just kind of like died out and he was able to start getting booked again after they pled their case to the media. That's fucking sick. That you even have to do that. It's so fucking disgusting. But again, you know, they're in the, the South in the fucking 60s or whatever. So... They end up moving to California. They build this house, all this shit. Um, she's talking about basically raising the kids on her own. You know, it's the kids telling the story. It's her daughters Aww. doing the doc. And um, not, I don't think any of the kids from June uh, Carter or Cash or whatever were involved in the documentary. Oh. It's only her daughters. And this is like a tribute to their mother and how she got fucked over in the long run and played. And she was such a great woman. And it's Aww. it's such a great story. And then... They even show after he passed, like um, June Carter passed 
before he did, right? So after she passed, they kind of had a, a reunion or whatever. They they met up and they were both so old and like they had a talk, a really long, much needed conversation, I guess, that gave them both a lot of peace mm -hmm. and they were getting along and everything. And then he passed. So they had this big, huge music tribute for him, right? And they show it. This was like in the early 2000s. Vivian was in the audience with her new husband. She's an old lady. They didn't acknowledge her not one time. And then one of the artists that did acknowledge her, like did a little shout out to her before he did his performance at this tribute. Mm -hmm. They had it cut out before they televised it. Why? Why would they do that? Right? Isn't that weird? And I'm thinking, what the fuck? What a way to spit in her fucking face. So her daughters are not happy with the way that like. They just erased her whole history with yeah. them. Like that's yeah. so gross. Yep. And, you know, they show, they talked about how they found a letter um, from their, that their mother had wrote and she never mailed it to him. And she was like, will you please just please for me, you know, I've never asked you for anything. Will you just ask your wife to stop calling my daughters, her kids in interviews? Because it breaks my heart because she did all this herself, her whole fucking life. And she never mailed it. And the girls were crying and they were like, I just wish she would have mailed it because he loved her and he would have done it. He would have told you june to stop fucking claiming right. her kids but what a shitty thing to do and then you know they made the johnny cash movie not that long instead ago instead of saying my kids how about you say our kids our kids and but she would like be like i'm so tired i'm so tired you know i got seven kids and like your bitch you never have them what are you talking about like those are not your kids you never take care of them they don't be in your care at all like what are you talking about wow just a shitty bitch and um she was beautiful. The Gorgeous. Vivian? Oh, my, oh my, God. my fucking God. She was stunning. She's Even as an old woman, like they show her entire life She's documented beautiful. videos, th uh, photos, everything. She's stunning. I want to watch that. Yeah, it's so good. But um, what else? What other parts stuck out to me? It's just so good. Just watch it. It's okay. a really, really good, it just a it nice love good. story. And just, I love that they were cool. Like they still were cool, even though like, you know. Yeah. But, oh, that's another thing they talked about. There was a Johnny Cash movie that came out recently. Mm -hmm. Um, They basically didn't, they showed a clip of her, like a little bit of it in the movies at like a very small mention of her in the movie. And it was in a very poor light. The daughters were like hot. Like they, it made her look bad. It made Vivian look bad. That's fucked up. She's and, part of his story. And was basically, he was stolen from her by June Carter. Like, and, but she gets all the shine and recognition. I didn't even know he had a first wife. See? That's crazy. So fucked up. So. Damn. Definitely watch it. That's my recommendation for this I'm week. I'm still watching Love is Blind. It is a way better season than the previous ones. It's crazy. And I've only made it to, <clears throat> you know, I don't <clears throat> care about spoilers, so go ahead. But I've only mm -hmm. made it to the second episode where they go on the honeymoon. Oh, okay. I can already tell. This is my prediction. Mm -hmm. I don't think... Is it Chelsea and Jimmy? <laughs> yeah. I don't think they're getting married. There's no way. I think when she said, "I," this is just my perception uh, at this point, but mm -hmm. I think when she said, I look like Megan Fox, she instantly became his pick because... Because of that? I do. And then because one of the things he said after he saw her, you know, he told her she was gorgeous and stuff, but... I saw when he was like... Remember he said, I got a bone to pick with her. She does not look like Megan Fox. And I thought that was fucked up. It's her up. mouth. She hella does. It's the mouth. They have identical mouths. Well, the eyes, hello. The eye color. She just has a mouth. long face. But like if, if you pretty. shortened her... She's gorgeous. She's pretty. But if she didn't have such a longer face, she would look more like her. She yes, just looks their like mouths her are shaped on a identical. longer face. So yeah. I could tell by the way he said that. Mm-hmm. He wasn't thrilled. Yeah. And just by watching them interact, mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to get married. Yeah. I don't think they're getting married. I, I, 
the couple this I- season is crazy and even shit is still coming out after the reunion it's wild. like people are finding out shit that they lied about or shit about their real lives that they did not fucking tell wow. and they're leaking it on social media oh i so gotta my get mind is i need still, to hurry up yes because my mind is still being blown all the time yesterday i found something out and i was like wow like that would have made a huge fucking difference had you mentioned that bitch yeah you should be disclosing shit like they they the kept couple a lot i of do shit. like that i think are genuine at this point mm-hmm. is i fuck i can't remember their names the white boy with the longer hair and the latin girl mm-hmm they feel genuine to me they right are. now. He's cringy, but yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, they feel genuine to me. Yeah, they are. Okay, that is probably the only one that feels genuine to me. Yep. It gets wild. You have to fucking watch it. You're going to want to kill a lot of people on the, on the show. <gasps> Great. Yeah, that was an emotional season for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's because good. the last two seasons were so fucking boring to yeah. me. They weren't like this. I'm like, this, this one's this one great, gets like fucking, the first one. Mm-hmm. It gets crazy. Good, I'm excited. It does. Um, I have, we have a couple write-ins. Yeah, I have one saved. I don't know. I'll just, like show you or something to see if you have it. Okay. It's, about, it's a story about a lie. Okay, yeah, you can read it. Wait. Uh, yep. Okay, you read it. Okay. Remember we asked for lies. Yeah, you guys send me good lies. Me. Us. Yes. Send us good lies. We want to share them and laugh. Okay. I have a story about a lie. When I was 16, I crashed my car driving down from my parents' house on my way to school because I was leaning over to pick up a water bottle and veered off the road just a bit. But of course, on the side of the road right where I swerved, there was the biggest, most jagged rock. Maybe it was a boulder. You can you can imagine. So I hit the big ass rock, which pops both tires on the passenger side. (laughs) <laughs> and throws the front and back axles totally out of alignment oh shit oh god i don't even know how that car wasn't totaled uh, as i did end up getting it fixed i was just gonna say once you fuck the, the axle, axle you're done the frame over. um here's where the lie comes in i called my mom in a panic i can only imagine what this is doing. i called my mom in a panic and And her and I both know my dad will be a total dick about it because it was all my fault leaning to get this bottle of water. So we decide to tell him that a deer jumped out in front of me (laughs) and I swerved to avoid hitting it so he wouldn't be mad at me. Good girl. I am 31 now and this story came up at a family dinner not long ago. Um, Hold on. I have another one. I have to find my spot. That's hella funny. (laughs) I get it though. I would say the deer story too 100 percent. wait where was i sorry no you're good um we could just edit this air out mark this. i'm 31 now and this story came up at a family dinner not long ago my mom and i are sticking to the lie to this day yes. oh my god i would lie and about keeping that. it going yeah I would. you're 31 it. now you can laugh maybe what the hell? Don't take it to the grave. It I would think be it's funny great, to though. laugh. Um, speaking of car shit, a dumb thing I did with my car before. So I parked in this parking lot, <laughs> and I didn't make it out in time, and they had closed the gates. And you know those metal gates that look like this? Uh, it's like a bar. Oh, a bar, yeah, yeah. And it's like a sideways it. triangle. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. and they padlock them. Yeah. And then there was an area in between the two driveways that were both padlocked with the sideways triangles. Mm-hmm. There was an area with some tan bark yeah. and with a curb all the way that was circled it, right? Mm-hmm. You tried to drive through that? I had a Pontiac Grand Am at the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I could just drive through the tan bark. Mm-hmm. I used to do I that drive, to get into my old apartment. Drove over the first curb. Bitch, my car got stuck like this on it. I couldn't go forward. You were teetering on yes, it? Yes, <laughs> I couldn't get off it. I had to call AAA. You had to call them to, f- oh my Let fucking God. Let me fucking God. tell you the best part. My mom and pop show up, right? Oh my I'm God. probably, I think I was like 21 at this time. Uh, mom and pop show up to try and help me while I'm waiting for AAA. Pop goes over and he's like, are you fucking stupid? You didn't check the gate, huh? And I was like, well, no, it's locked. He goes like this. No, it's not. The lock's just sitting there on it. And he pushed it. It wasn't even. Yep. And it fucking opened. Wasting everyone's fucking everyone's time. Everyone's time. It was like 930 at night and I'm teeter tottering. 
because I thought I could drive at through. your big age at your big 20. Now I got a, now age. I got a bigger car where I could drive over right, and get all the way through. Yes. Oh, my fucking God. OK, I have one about crashing a car. <laughs> it was my friend's grandma's car. And so I would stay at her house and we did whatever the fuck we she's probably listening, Leanna. Um, we did whatever we wanted. We would go in and out that window. We would have friends come through in and out the window. Like we were, it was like not, not a party house, but like, just like my grandparents, her grandparents were fucking tired. They were not fucking dealing with us. So I made my way out to where she lived and would fucking stay there for weeks on end. One night I'm like, you know what? I can drive. Like, let's take their fucking car. Asshole. We, it's in a garage. Somehow we like turn the TV up so they don't hear us open the garage door. We take the fucking, I'm backing out. We go on a a drive. We're driving around. Um, I think we were doing graffiti in the middle of the night. We had spray paint we found from maybe in her. Not old enough to drive. No, like 15. Um, Found spray paint, I think, in her grandpa's garage. Probably had it for like a handy job or something. Yeah, we take it. We're doing graffiti. We're driving around. We have the music up. I think we stole packs of Marlboros because he had um, cartons all up in the house. We would help ourselves. I didn't inhale. I just wanted to look cool. cool? Driving this car all over the place. Might have even been 14 at the time because I don't know. High school. I don't think I was even really in high school like that yet. Um... (laughs) We're driving, driving. We cruised by my cousin's house. I tapped on his window and I was like, do you have any money so we can put some gas in this car? He was like, money? I didn't even fuck with him like that. Like, we weren't close cousins You're like, like look that. at me, I'm driving. I, exactly. You're front, like, he's do you like, see how cool I am? He's like, whose car are you in? What are you, this is like my mom's nephew. This is on like the more square side of the family. Like, he's like, what are you doing? And no, I don't have any money. So I was like, uh, you're a hater, whatever. Look how I leave. cool I am. I cruise off, probably fire up another cigarette. We go, <laughs> it's <laughs> we're laughing we get back to the house we're laughing correct me if i'm wrong right in but um i'm like trying to quietly it's got the there was an incline on the driveway i'm trying to like quietly ease into the fucking garage somehow i punch it <laughs> i punch <laughs> up the driveway <laughs> somehow i punch it and fucking we fly up the driveway and crash into the house i miss the driveway i miss the wow, garage the whole garage I, I crash into the house bricks are broken bricks <gasps> are falling there's a rent rent where the car hit the foundation like the house the drive like the what is it called the outside of the garage the frame the frame of the garage was nit, nit, like <laughs> bent the car it's like i think the car was smoking like i hit it so fucking hard we probably had whiplash we get out the car i we're crying laughing <laughs> like it's so funny pretty sure i peed my pants of course um, in front of the house it's like dawn we're crying laughing we go we climb in the window i leave it you- <laughs> <laughs> we leave it there we climb in the window we're crying laughing we go to bed <laughs> wow y'all were bold the next day we're like <laughs> Somebody stole. <laughs> We're like somebody stole the car. Oh my god! Somebody stole the fucking car. We saw them running. Like we- <laughs> the grandma was so fed up. She was like, "Bitch, I know y'all did it." Did, wait, did they believe it? I don't. We, I mean, we didn't get in trouble, but what could they do? We didn't have money or anything to fix it. They had to have like contractors come rebuild the front of the house right there. Like, I remember they had to get quotes and have people come and like fix all of that, tear it out, and fix it because and- you punched and missed the garage <laughs> after you left your cousin's house that you don't fuck with. Like, look how cool I am. I'm so cool. <laughs> like why why and then we were like oh my god like they stole it and they fucking brought it back and like, yeah. like the story doesn't even make sense it's like your grandma with the heart attack <laughs> it's like that story like this lie 
<laughs> that's why I can't lie. Like in high You're pressure, terrible. Situ- like what? And and I will argue you to the death that it's true. And it's like what? Like, the most I, ridiculous. Yes, shit. unbelievable shit. We were like, I think we saw them running away or something. Like they brought it back. We heard the noise. Like the house shook. Like. <laughs> It was probably a fucking earthquake when we did it. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, bless her you grandparents. Got fuck, put her them fucking, through hell. Our that grandparents Buick, for real. That Buick smacked hard into the fucking house, and y'all got out and laughed. <laughs> I think I peed, and then, <laughs> it's not a story until you pee. You and always then climbed pee. through the window and went to bed, like. And left it there and could go uh-huh. to sleep. Could you imagine if Bunny and Stevie fucking... Off, n- I would fucking... <laughs> bitch, they couldn't tell me no lie because of our childhood. St- no, There's no, no lie they could ever tell. Stole our car and they crashed it in the front of the house and went <laughs> Talking about bed. someone stole it and brought it back. <laughs> what sense does it make? Oh my God. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> Good fucking times. The worst. And just, I think we wanted to ride to the mall the next day. Like, we were just... The nerve. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's smoking. Fucking take us to the mall. Get it running. Like, we gotta go to the mall. <laughs> Get someone to jump in. <laughs> we have to go to Hilltop. We just got we dressed. We have to walk around. We just got dressed. We don't have no money, but, no. like, we have to go. We're so. walking around. Grandma, figure we're it out. We're getting ice water from Cinnabon yes. and walking around. <laughs> Doing miles in this bitch today. We got it well it over 10,000 steps. <laughs> Every time. Yes. Oh, my God. <clears throat> God damn. <sighs> yeah, send us your lies, you guys. No, for real, because I know y'all got some. Okay. I have a long ride in. Okay. Um, thank you, ladies, times a thousand for reading my recent dysfunctional stories. The embarrassment of the poised pad crazy sex lady <laughs> are just the tip of the iceberg <laughs> of my dysfunctional life. LOL. <clears throat> With that being said, trigger warning. Suicidal ideation, self-harm, child abuse. Lately, I've been having depressing thoughts about my decision to go no contact with my mother. She's one of those people that always put on a facade to the outside world that she's a good parent. In reality, she was an abusive parent. She never made me feel safe growing up, and all the bad memories of her physical mental abuse outweigh any good memories of my childhood. One memory just sticks out like a sore thumb I wish I could forget. It was the time she angrily pulled me by my arm out of bed. Mind you, this was a school night as I was dead asleep. She starts slapping me behind my shoulder and Mm -hmm. a couple times on the back of my head. She's yelling at the top of her lungs for whatever reason. She didn't care. She continued to have a meltdown and take it out on me. I always took the fall for my mom's abuse because I didn't want my disabled sister to be on the receiving end of one of her temper tantrums. I don't regret my decision to take the abuse. I never wanted my sister hurt. Accepting the abuse on my sister's behalf was the only control I felt I had. We were having dinner one night and something triggered her anger. She threw her plate of spaghetti at the kitchen wall, got up in my sister's face, got up in mine and my sister's faces and yelled at us to clean it up. To this day, I don't know what triggered her to do that, but all I remember was her anger. Mm -mm. After years of going in and out of mental hospitals in my area, I was diagnosed with severe depression, social anxiety, and CPTSD. I often find myself getting really anxious, scared whenever anyone raises their voice, twins, door slamming, yelling, etc. I feel that 100% instantly sick to my stomach. Every time I tried to bring up what she had done and how it has affected me into adulthood, adulthood she all of a sudden has selective memory and doesn't remember Mm -mm. how convenient right when in reality she was the reason i why i attempted suicide in the past and was in those mental hospitals all throughout my 20s i have a scar from her burning a cigarette on my right arm that reminds me daily she shouldn't have been a parent oh my god she's emotionally scarred me growing up by always saying you kids had it good here because if you were in the system they'd do you worse As if what she was doing wasn't the exact same thing. She always trauma dumped on me about the child abuse she endured in foster care. Her abuse trauma dumping on me forced me to grow up quicker to where I had to help regulate her emotions. It just sucks that she will never apologize for the hurt she's caused. I made a promise to myself and my partner that I'll continue attending therapy to heal all the hurt. 
I refused to become an angry person due to the abuse I got. The hardest pill for me to swallow is mourning the mother I never got the chance to have. Sorry for how long this is. I just need some words of encouragement, advice on all of this. Am I doing the right thing? Thank you, Tia's. I always appreciate your wisdom. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Fuck you that. have to look out for you. And I'm so sorry that you didn't grow up with someone taking care of you like right. they should have. My fucking God. Um, <clears throat> the fact that she won't even acknowledge she claims to not remember any of these incidents is an indicator that you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. If she can't even acknowledge that they happened, then how do you build a relationship on broken exactly. fucking bricks? You can't. Exactly. Um, it's unfortunate. It, it is, and it's sad, and it's fucked up, and it's a reality. You know, for a lot of people, their parents don't take accountability and apologize. Like, a simple... Apology with words goes so fucking far. Just mm -hmm. know that when you're raising your own children. Yeah. Apologize. If something you do hurts them and they tell you, just apologize. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I wouldn't, I would continue going to therapy. I would leave it alone. Yeah. Maybe reach out in a year or two if she's still the same. It, it, it You know, it is what it is, unfortunately. Yeah. And don't feel guilt about that. No. Like you have to put yourself number one. No one else did. Right. And you have to look out for you. Um, I'm in a similar situation where I separated myself from my mother. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same thing. Um, she won't acknowledge the damage that she did. There's not really accountability like there should be. Right. There's a little bit, but like it's kind of like, oh, I've been apologized to you a long time ago like why are you still tripping kind of attitude yeah um that's not a real apology to mm -hmm. me so um because my well-being is not a concern to that person it has to be the number one concern to me absolutely and so i do what is good for me and i think about it all the time like should i like you know for the sake of this or for the sake of no 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 i've sacrificed my well-being and happiness for other people's comfort for too much of my life. And yeah. I'm at a place now where I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not <clears throat> going to go to family functions or, you know, just like be the peacekeeper or like make make myself uncomfortable so other people can be comfortable. I'm not doing that no and more. And on top so. of that, you deserve, <clears throat> you deserve to be loved and apologized to. Yeah. You're I just think about how I parent and how I feel with my kids and how devastated I would be if one of them told me that I hurt them on this scale. I would immediately apologize and yeah. be like, what? I would go above and beyond Absolutely. For, to do anything to, I would want just not even for them, for me, I would want to fix that for them. Like they would never have to even ask. So the fact that like, there's resistance and there's denial and there's like the it's disgusting so yeah. for someone to get that selective memory about your trauma and like abuse on that level and you have a cigarette burn to i would break her fucking arms like yeah they're oh my she's god she's lucky she got those photos uh, yeah in the fucking outfit in the park out of you. yeah for you know real. what i because mean? i wouldn't be doing shit i'm sorry yeah <clears throat> no no you're, you're doing, doing what right you're thing. doing yeah you're doing the right thing for sure. Um, we have a birthday. You want to read it? Yeah. And then. Hey, aunties. I wanted to give a birthday shout out to my partner, RJ. He was the one who wrote in about his mom being the weird sex lady <laughs> uh, in the fishnet bodysuit. His birthday is on Wednesday the 13th, and I knew getting a shout out on his favorite podcast would make it super special. I also got some wild stories to send in that I think you ladies would love. Get on please it. Please do. <laughs> um, thank you so much for the amazing show. You two, you two put a smile on our faces even during the hardest days. Mm, thank, thank you. And that's from Desiree. Happy birthday, RJ. Happy birthday. And you... Keep doing what you're doing. Yes. And get us those stories. Yes. <laughs> and then just a little quick write-in. Okay. Um, I just wanted to reach out and say that I love you ladies so, so much. I'm kind of a new listener. I've been listening for a year, just the new episodes, but I decided to go back and listen to all the old episodes. I'm currently on episode 81. Thank you for sharing your stories and being 100% authentic. You both have such beautiful souls and you've touched so many hearts. 
Thank you. Very sweet. That's really sweet. Her name's Priscilla. I thought Thank it was very you. sweet. Yeah. All right. All right. I think that's all I got. You guys know what you're supposed to do. You know. And if you don't, this is your homework. You go subscribe. Yep. Um, YouTube. <clears throat> YouTube. <clears throat> you answer the YouTube comment. <laughs> yes. Um, rate and review us on iTunes. Borrow everyone's device that you know of and do the same thing from there to help us with our visibility. You graffiti I love hello dysfunction on stuff. Tattoo it. Yep. Um, and not go read the YouTube comment. Jesus Christ. Go answer the question. Oh, Pada yeah. Freya asked earlier under in our YouTube comments. What were we talking about? Oh, suicide. Yes. If if they feel, you know. Yeah. We want to know if you think it's selfish or not selfish. Yeah. Or, you know, so let us know that. And that's it. Yeah. Till next time. Suck it easy. Go to bed. <laughs>